It's exciting when Lexus reviews two cars in one evening. They have the new GX and the new TX. So in this video, I am going to go through the TX and see how much different is that from the Grand Highlander and is this much better than the RXL when it came out many years ago. So many years ago, Lexus released the Lexus RXL because there was a high demand for three-row SUVs. And you can think of it, Acra had the MDX, right? And Lexus hadn't, don't have anything that is comparable to it. They did have the GX or the LX, but those are real off-roaders. They were body-on-frame vehicles and they were not unibody SUVs. So the RX was the only was only available in a two row setting and nothing was offered. So what they did was they looked at it and took the shortcut and made a carbon copy version of the two row and called it the RXL. They then added the third row and added 4.4 inches to the vehicle, but then they kept the wheelbase the same size. It was positive that they offered a three-row SUV, but the negative side was that it was just too cramped. Adults were not able to fit there on the third row, and many people just bought the RXL just for the extra trunk space. When the third row was folded down, it was actually a large trunk, but Lexus never hit the mark for the real three-row SUV. And now, 2024 model year. Lexus tries this again, but they didn't do it with the RX. They launched a brand new model, which is exclusively to the North American market, the Lexus TX. And at this time of recording, we do not know what TX really stands for. We do know that X means crossover, but what could the T stand for? Could it stand for three row? Would it be that simple? Leave in the comments below if you know what it stands for or you actually can guess on what the T stands for. Lexus says that the design of the TX, they actually prioritize aerodynamic performance which actually in result enhance efficiency and handling stability. And also what they've done is they've, as a result of this design, they actually took the spindle grille, the spindle body and created something new. They called it the Lexus Unified Spindle. The headlights are linked by a narrow aperture that runs beneath and leading edge of the hood, under which low sets a low set grille form and a seamless spindle shape. The sleek front end was designed to enhance aerodynamic handling and provides a sense of mass and cooling performance. So what do you think about this new unified spindle? They keep on changing names. They have the spindle grill, they have the spindle body, and now they have this unified spindle. So do you think this makes sense? From a design perspective, I think they've done an excellent job. You can see in this grill, between the slits, you can see the sensors, the parking sensors. On the top slit, you can see there's a front camera. And above, right under the Lexus logo, you see that little black piece? That is actually the adaptive radar cruise control. You don't notice it. I think this is much better than a lot of other manufacturers like Mercedes-Benz, Genesis, Hyundai, all that. They have a black piece of plastic, a clear plastic, so that they can protect the radar from any debris or anything. I think this is a very good design. The TX is built on the TNGA K platform or the GAK. And there's a lot of vehicles that Toyota Lexus uses at the same platform, like the ES, the LM, the NX, RX, and now the TX. So a lot of vehicles are actually using the same platform. And even on the Toyota side, you have the Camry, the RAV4, a lot of vehicles uses the exact same platform. And it's not a bad thing, right? When you compare the vehicle size, the TX and comparing to the RXL, which had three rows as well. So when you look at the overall length, the TX is 203.1 to 203.5 inches in length. And you compare that to the RXL, it was 196.9. So from there, you're already seeing about six inches in length difference. 
and on width difference, 78.3 for the TX compared to 74.6 inches. That's again another, I would say, 3 point something inches. And then from a height perspective, 70.1 inches for the TX compared to the RX, which was 67.3 another almost three inches in differences. And then the wheelbase. The wheelbase on the TX was 116.1 inches comparing to the RXL which is 109.8. So that's about six inches, six point something inches difference in wheelbase. So definitely there is a lot more room on that third row. And even six foot uh, l adults we'd be sitting in there and you may feel just okay. So anybody under six feet will have no problem sitting in the back. Even six feet guys or gals, you would still be okay. It just probably longer trips, you may have some concerns. The 2024 TX will come in three models and two of them are actually hybrid models. The TX350 using a 2.4 liter inline 4 turbo with 8 speed automatic and is available in both front wheel drive and all wheel drive. The engine is the same as what you see in the NX, RX and even the Grand Highlander as well. It produces 275 horsepower with 317 pound feet of torque and it's rated at 20 miles per gallon in the US combined or 11.2 liters per 100 kilometers. This engine is the replacement of the 3.5 liter V6 engine that is commonly used in many Toyota and Lexus products. So you'll be seeing this engine used across the board when it comes to the Camry and all the other vehicles who originally had the 3.5 liter V6. The second model is the TX500H and this is using the same 2.4 liter turbo engine but it's paired with a 6 speed automatic and having direct 4 all wheel drive. It can produce 366 horsepower and 409 pound feet of torque. This is the same powertrain that you see in the RX 500H and even in the Grand Highlander Hybrid Max trims. It is rated at 24 miles per gallon in the US combined or 9.8 liters per 100 kilometers in Canada. And the last trim is the TX 550H Plus. This is a plug-in hybrid and it's not available on the Grand Highlander. This is the first vehicle to get this powertrain. Uh, we haven't seen any other Lexus vehicle or Toyota vehicle using this 550H plus powertrain. It's using the 3.5 liter V6 engine and it's paired with an CVT, producing 406 horsepower. And Lexus did not provide any torque numbers, but this one should be quite torquey. The hybrid system has a 30 miles per gallon or 7.8 liters per 100 kilometers combined when it's not in EV mode. And it has 33 miles or 53 miles of EV range. And when you compare this to the NX plug-in hybrid, it does come short a bit because the NX plug-in hybrid got 37 miles or 59 kilometers of EV range. So it's a few miles and kilometers short, but I would say Based on the numbers that we're seeing, I think the TX will be equipped with the same 18.1 kilowatt hour battery. There's very little information regarding this plug-in hybrid and it's said that it will be available at a later date. So I assume it's not going to be available that soon. And you may only hope that it will be available late 2024 when the battery plant opens in the United States in 2025. So I don't know how they're going to arrange it. Maybe they're going to accelerate the battery plant or they'll have to ship batteries to uh, North America. And then they did say that the, it, the exclusively the 2024 is expected to go on sale at a later date. So they did say that there will be a 2024 model, but I just don't know how many of them will be available. The 2024 Lexus TX will come with four standard grades. There'll be the standard, premium, luxury, and F Sport performance. The standard, premium, and luxury grades will get 20 inch alloy wheels. And if you're interested in getting the 22 inch, the TX 350 luxury grade will have an option to get the 22 inch wheels. 
and it, the 22 inch wheels will be standard on the 550H Plus as well. And when we look at the 500H F Sport Performance, it will ride on standard 22 inch wheels, which is exclusively for the F Sport Performance line. And in Canada, they will only have five grades. They'll have the Premium, Ultra Luxury, Executive, and F Sport Performance 2 and 3. The Premium grade will actually get the 20 inch wheels. And then the 22 inch are going to be standard on the TX Ultra Luxury for the 350 and Executive for the 350 and 550H Plus grades. And the 500H F Sport Performance will also get the 22 exclusive wheels for the F Sport Performance grade. Both United States and Canada are getting 7 exclusive colors for the TX and it really depends on what grade you'll get to pick what colors your is available. There is the Cloud Burst Grey, Windshield Pearl, Caviar, Matador Red Mica, Nightfall Mica, Incognito and Celestial Silver Metallic. The TX is similar to the GX which is brand new and also the LBX. It will get the 12.3 multimedia information display on the dash. So instead of having that small square 7 inch, now they're getting the 12.3 inch. And also it gets the standard the Lexus digital latch system and then they'll also get the 14 inch infotainment system. There are going to be other things that are available like it won't, because you have the 14 inch Lexus interface you'll also have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And then there's available a 21 inch Mark Levinson premium sound system for the TX. It doesn't say what is the base um, sound system I and mean, I'm thinking probably it would be the 10 speaker uh, Pioneer version. I don't know. Uh, there's not enough information at this time. Probably we'll learn more when time comes. From a usability standpoint, every row on the guest will actually get comfort and convenience features. They're saying that Lexus is the only one that would actually ensure that everybody and every seat will have the Lexus enjoyment. So what they're saying here is there is seven charging or communication ports with three power outlets enabling customers to use their smartphone or tablets while the person's driving, right? Uh, there are cup holders and it can carry different sizes and bottles and it can actually be removed. So we all know that there will be heated and ventilated seats for the front passengers and for the second row, it depends on the grade that you pick, there will be two configurations, captain's chair or a 60-40 split folding bench. And the rear seats, uh, these second row seats, will have options of the heated and ventilated seats. They did not say exclusively if they were standard or they, it's part of an option or depending on what grade there is. I think more information will be available at that time. And then the third row, they're saying that accessing the third row is actually easy because all you need to do is press a, a switch on the shoulder seat and the seat will tilt forward and slide in one action. So you can easily get into the third row just by clicking on or pressing onto that switch. And talking about interior colors, there will only be three offerings and it depends on what grade you pick. There'll be the peppercorn, birch, and black. The TX also comes with the latest Lexus Safety System Plus 3.0 and it's standard across all of it so there's nothing you need to worry about. And this includes the pre-collision system with pedestrian detection, all speed, dynamic radar cruise control, lane tracing assist, lane departure alert with steering assist, road sign assist, and proactive driving assist. All these technologies are there to help the driver and also to avoid pedestrians and vehicles so that you can ensure that the TX will not hit something. So in the TX, there's three rows. So when the third row is folded down, you have 57.4 cubic feet of storage. And when the second row also gets folded down, it increases to 97 cubic feet. And when you're on a road trip with the all three rows being used, there's still 20.1 cubic feet behind the third row. So there's still a lot of room to put those luggages and stuff that you need. 
Because the TX is exclusively made in for North America, it will be exclusively made in North America as well. So it would be made by Toyota Motor Manufacturing Indiana, TMMI, and this will be the first Lexus vehicle that will be assembled there. So that now includes three plants in North America making Lexus vehicles. So, so we have TMMC, which is Toyota Motor Mag Manufacturing Canada, in Cambridge, Ontario, making the RX and the NX. And we have Kentucky making the ES, which that will shift later on. And now we have Indiana making the Lexus TX. So when will the TX be available? Well, the 2024 TX350 and 500H are expected to go on sale this fall. And the 2024 TX550H is expected to go on sale later date. So. If it's fall for the 350 and the 500H, I probably think that it will be in 2024, where you'll see the 500, 550H+. Plus. So the 350 and the 500H uses similar engines as the RX and the NX, so it totally makes sense. So the engine plants will just keep on making more engines and to accommodate the TX. I think the TX 550H takes a little bit more because it will require them to now start building batteries because the 3.5 liter V6, they're already making them before already. So I don't think there's a problem with that and no problems with the quality of those as well. So it's just now timing of when can they source batteries so that they can produce the 550H+. So my final thoughts of the TX and this whole new unified spindle design. So I'm a fan of the current blackened out uh, spindle grille. And now looking at the changes that they've done to the unified spindle and the spindle body, yes, I think it's still very recognizable as a Lexus. And I think this one is not too bad. Um, I, I think looking at different treatments probably would make it a little bit different, but I like how they've actually integrated the cameras, the sensors, and the radar so that it doesn't stick out and actually think that, okay, there's something there. The changes are great. Um, I think the, the changes of the lights, where they reverse the L, um, I think that's fine, but I do feel that other manufacturers have light systems similar to that. So it makes it harder to identify this as a Lexus when you're far away. But overall, the spindle is still there. But I think that it actually will grow in me and I think that will look fine. I still like the F Sport. I really hope that the F Sport and the Executive or Premium brands trims, they actually will look a little bit different so that the F Sport does look more sporty and not just the same. So hopefully there will be more photos, more things that we can see, and we can then see, okay, this is what it would look like. If you're looking for a lot of room, driving seven people around, I think this is great. It's a totally great option, much better than the RX. The RX for me is already big, so the TX would definitely be too big for me. And I'm actually interested to know more about the TX 550H Plus because I'm an owner of the 450H Plus anyways. So this one having 400 horses, this one probably would actually be very fast. There's no zero to 60 numbers, or 0 to 100 numbers, and, the, and I feel that the TX seems to have less information at release. So there'll be more information that'll be coming in. When you looked at the GX comparison, the GX gave you a lot of information. There's so many things that they've included as part of that press release, but for the TX, it seems to be a little bit on the lighter side. Overall, I like this design more than the Grand Highlander, and definitely this one will cost more than the Grand Highlander as well. So there we have it, the 2024 Lexus TX, and you can leave in the comments below, do you like the t TX, and will you actually get one? Are you concerned that this is not made in Japan, and it's only available in a brand new plant in the United States? Leave in the comments below of your thoughts. Until next time, drive safely. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please comment, like, and share this video. If you'd like to see more videos like this, you can subscribe to my channel and press that alert button to get notified when new videos are posted.
If you'd like to support the channel, you can definitely provide a super thanks. I'll see you guys again next time in the next video.